Great, good morning, everybody. It's 10 o'clock, let's start our webinar. Uh, my name is Sarah Snabel. Uh, I am one of the co-owners of ProErgonomics. I'm a certified ergonomist, and I'm gonna do the webinar today. So we have uh, just a bit of a shorter webinar today. So I'm calling it a hot topic. So just kind of a, a quick summary of you know something that seems to be really popular um, going on in terms of questions that we get from clients or just things that are you know, kind of a, a big focus on what we're working on right now. Um, so that's kind of what the hot topic means. But today's theme is work shouldn't hurt. And so, you know, this direction could go in, we could take this in a whole bunch of different directions. Uh, but the, the goal for today's webinar is to talk more about how it kind of applies to like ergonomics in terms of um, maybe all of the seasonal staff that you have coming in right now or um, temp staff, uh, again, kind of increasing for the summer. Um, it could be your summer students that are coming in. Um, and then this topic also kind of applies to uh, people returning to work. And so the, although very different topics, right, you know, your seasonal and your summer staff versus people re returning to work after an injury, um, some of the concepts that uh, I kind of wanted to cover would apply to both. So um, I feel that way then, we, you know, everybody can kind of get a little bit out of this. But just to give you, um, I know that we always have some regular webinar attendees. We also always have some new people. So I wanted to make sure um, that I just gave a little overview about pro ergonomics. Um, so we are an ergonomic consulting and training company. Um, the partners at pro ergonomics are all certified professional ergonomists. Uh, our whole team are registered kinesiologists as well. Um, so, you know, we really strive to be professionals in what we do. Our goal is to reduce strains and sprains in the workplace. Um, so that's really our big focus. Um, and then between our team, uh, we all kind of have our own little niches and our, our background, like our work backgrounds all kind of vary a little bit. And so between uh, the whole team here, we, we really work hard um, to collaborate and give our clients kind of the best, most effective and innovative solutions when it comes to ergonomics. So try to be experts in the field. So uh, for today's webinar, uh, that's kind of you know where this comes from is that I, I want to talk about ergonomics for MSD prevention, um, and I think also it pairs nicely with that return to work. So just talking a little bit about both, um, and really where I want to where I want to take this is kind of talking about training and job coaching and some tips, some strategies on how to really make it effective um, to make sure that you're actually achieving what you want to achieve, which hopefully is injury prevention, right? So we're talking about those strains and sprains, um, bringing somebody back to work successfully. Um, those would be probably your main goals. So training, job coaching, um, I don't necessarily want to use these words um, and, and kind of imply the same meaning. Um, I do think that they are different. Um, training is generally more about like often happens more in of a group setting. And that's like providing that background information on a topic, um, right? So if I kind of break out the definitions here, um, training is providing the learner with the tools that they need. So giving them that background education, the, you know, what is ergonomics? Um, what is a musculoskeletal disorder? Or what is a strain or a sprain? Uh, kind of giving them that, that information. Whereas coaching is helping them to kind of hone in on the skills. So helping that learner to use the tools, or learn, use that education that you've given them to really achieve that maximum effectiveness. So, you know, you, they've learned, you've done the training, you've taught them about what is ergonomics, and then coaching them is helping them to make sure that they're really applying it. So generally, I mean, not always, but generally training is more of a group setting, and then coaching is more in a one-on-one -on -one setting, or it could be small groups as well. Um, but generally, I think most definitions will say that it's more of a one-on-one. -on -one. So in terms of, you know, what you need for summer students or su uh, seasonal students um, coming in, like I know that they probably get a whole ton of training. You probably have an orientation, you have some safety training, hopefully ergonomics is a piece of that. Um, and maybe if you're listening in today, this will kind of uh, give you uh, some interest uh, or some ideas, sorry, on um, how you might better include that in there if you aren't already or if you are on how to, you know, enhance it. Um, but 
ergonomics, uh, there's a lot of definitions actually. Uh, not, sorry, a lot of definitions. There's a lot of ways that you can word it. It's the same definition, just always worded in different ways. The International Ergonomics Association will give you a wordy definition, right? But it's, it's really about how a worker um, interacts with their system. And the system can be the environment that they work in, the tasks that they do, the items that they use, um, you know, all of those factors. Um, and just while I was trying to pull up that definition, because I hadn't been to the International Ergonomic Association website in a while, but they had a really interesting uh, kind of secondary definition here that I really liked uh, and I wanted to share. But ergonomics, because uh, I just feel like it helps to kind of understand more of the application, right? Like that wordy definition is is all fine and dandy, but I mean, that's not really, I don't think you're gonna to want to include that necessarily in the training session um, when you're talking about trying to engage people, right? Like, let's let's make it interesting. But ergonomics helps to harmonize things that interact with people. So people's needs, their abilities, their limitations, and ergonomics is trying to blend all of that together to make sure that we're working safe, that we're making, that we're working effective, that we're being productive, that we're trying to optimize all of that. So I really liked that term, harmonize. So thought I would throw that out there in case maybe you have or haven't been to the International Ergonomics Association website, but I thought that was a really interesting um, definition. So that graphic is pulled from their site as well. And really, your short definition when you're doing a training session and you you know, what is ergonomics? You're trying to educate um, these new people coming in. It's fitting the work to the worker, right? That is always the short and sweet definition. Um, but what I like about kind of those lengthier ones is that, um, yeah, we're here, we're talking about work uh, because you're the employer, you've hired these people for the summer or the season um, and we're talking about work, but ergonomics absolutely applies to everything. It applies to work, to play, it, a, it a, you know, it a, your extracurriculars, your home life, work, home, play, um, it applies in all of those. So it's about how you interact with your system, right, your environment, your, your tasks, um, you know, at work and at home, but I know the focus when we do training at work is always fitting the work to the worker, but that's always your kind of goal definition that you want to get across. Um, and the goal of ergonomics is preventing musculoskeletal disorders or preventing strains and sprains. So in terms of that training component that you're trying to get across, um, it's trying to kind of just educate people on what an MSD is, the difference between an MSD versus like which is a strain or a sprain right if i in layman's terms uh, a strain or a sprain and in terms of uh, where ergonomics comes into play it's those chronic ones right it's the wear and tear that occurs over time so that's really what you're trying to hit home um you know if you slip and fall for example like you, you trip you fall off the curb uh whether you break, break your ankle or you twist your ankle which could be considered a strain or a sprain that's an acute injury Right? It's not necessarily um, a musculoskeletal disorder. It's not something that happened with wear and tear over time. You know exactly that that fall, that falling off of the curb is what caused that strain to the uh, your ankle ligaments or broke the ankle bone, right? That's an acute strain. So something that you're really trying to hit home to to new uh, staff or you know people coming back to work uh, is that it is that wear and tear that's occurring over time. So anytime that you start a new task, whether it be a new job, whether it be um, you know your first game of baseball out um, for the season, your first game of hockey um, after the summer season, anything like that, the first time, your first time back to the gym after uh, many, many months off, uh, that first time that you're back out there, like your muscles are going to hurt a little bit. They are. Your muscles are going to be doing something that they are not necessarily used to doing. You're going to ask them to kind of go above and beyond their normal. And it is normal to feel a little bit of discomfort in those, you know, after that first game or after your first couple of days of work. Um, now, it doesn't necessarily mean that you are on your way to an MSD. Um, again, there is like that. It's almost like a, a work hardening phase or a muscle conditioning phase. So the first little bit when you're kind of getting used to the demands of the job, then yeah, your body is going to, your body might feel a little bit of discomfort. And so it's important to hit home that that doesn't necessarily mean an injury is coming. However, we also want to make sure that we're highlighting that those can be early warning signs of an MSD if they continue to progress, right? So there is that normal um, kind of work conditioning or muscle conditioning phase where, um, 
we might feel a little bit of discomfort when a task is new. So, you know, you think about your summer students or your seasonal staff, maybe they're out working in the parks, for example. Uh, they're on their feet all day, and it's not that you're asking them to do something crazy, it's just that their body isn't quite used to that because of whatever else they've been doing for the last few months. Um, so that kind of education, that training piece is identifying what is a muscular dis skeletal disorder or an MSD, the strain and sprain, um, and just making sure that they are aware of your internal processes too, about how to report them, um, to report any concerns and to make sure that they know that you know there is a difference between um, kind of that initial initial discomfort they might feel versus prolonged right so wear and tear that occurs over time usually has to be weeks or months the big message that you want to try to hit home is how does ergonomics apply to me this is always my goal in any training session is to be able to answer this question regardless of the industry that I am delivering training or coaching to I want to be able to kind of make that connection between the general ergonomics principles uh, and how it applies to that specific job or that group of workers or that specific person, um, how it applies to them to really make sure that they're getting that connection. So that's kind of where potentially coaching comes into play. Like you can totally take, you can take your training to go in that route, um, you know, where you're giving some examples and you're talking very specifically, you know, like you, you can talk about some general ergonomic principles like force, posture, and repetition. And the examples that you use are going to vary if you're talking about more of an industrial or a manufacturing environment versus working in a hospital versus working in parks or in the roads crews. Um, your examples are all going to be very different, but you want to do you do want to make sure that it is specific, uh, that you're kind of making that connection. And that's where um, kind of including an element of job coaching is going to be, I think, the most effective or, you know, that's where I find it the most effective or kind of calling it coaching. So instead of, you know, just PowerPoint slides, um, you kind of take it to a different level where you're educating them on some safe work practices or safe body mechanics, very specific to the tasks that they're going to be doing. Right, so job coaching doesn't have to be about, um, you know, that sense of career development or professional goals. And I'm not necessarily talking about how to do the person's job, right? I, you know, that you have your SOP and this is how to do the job, but this is kind of taking an ergonomic perspective on the same task. So helping them to understand the work smarter, not harder philosophy that we often use to, to talk about ergonomics. Um, we want to be able to accommodate all workers regardless of their ability. So um, figuring out what the task is, what they, um, like for example, somebody returning to work, figuring figuring out what the task is and what they are or, or not able to do at that exact moment. Um, and then uh, also kind of figuring out ways that they might be able to do things maybe different, maybe uh, maybe a better way, maybe using a different tool. Uh, but this is where this kind of coaching comes into play is kind of figuring out the needs. So if we are talking about somebody returning to work, it is very much um, a one-on-one. -on -one. That's kind of where I see job coaching really coming to play. You have somebody who's returning to work, they've been off for a long time. I think that having a one-on-one -on -one meeting with them um, to like, sure, you can go through slides or I'm not really sure that you literally would go through slides in a return to work aspect. Um, but having having that one-on-one -on -one job coaching is really effective. Uh, and I know that we've done that um, I've done it when I've worked in-house and I've done it as a consultant as well when somebody's coming back to work, but just meeting with them kind of, you know, okay, you're back from a shoulder injury. Um, let's think about your pre-injury job or whatever job they're coming back to. And what are the, some of the tasks that might present some challenges uh, and kind of going through thinking about how they're going to, to overcome those in their day-to-day -day work, right? So, um, you know, for example, I've done this with a healthcare aide or a, a PSW in a long-term care environment. So they're coming back to work, they've had a shoulder injury. Um, it's just going through kind of one-on-one -on -one and helping to remind them on how they can adjust the bed to interact with the patient. Um, doing some refreshers on the equipment that's available, uh, making sure that they know if there's any new equipment that's been introduced or hmm, maybe there's a piece of equipment that they never were using before um, because 
I don't know, whatever reason that they thought maybe they didn't need to use it or they didn't want to take the time or whatever the, whatever the long list of reasons could be. Um, but now coming back from an injury, they realize the benefit. So just going through that one-on-one -on -one, uh, again to make sure that they're comfortable in using all of that. If we're talking about more uh, of a group setting or if we're talking about, you know, your summer, or your seasonal staff, then the job coaching maybe comes into play talking about their tasks. Um, for example, you have your park staff who are out doing weed trimming all day, um, you know, with the, the string trimmers. Um, maybe it's talking to them about uh, just you know, and you can do this probably more in a, a small group setting, but really honing in on what's available to them. Sure, you give them the trimmer, you show them the safe operation. That's kind of the basics in terms of the safety and the training that, that the students normally get or the seasonal staff normally get. But, you know, what about the ergonomic components? So that's taking it from a different perspective of, did you know that the handles can adjust, that they slide up and down? You know, you do the, the start of your shift, probably take a little screwdriver, but most handles on weed trimmers can adjust. Did you know that there's straps available? Okay, maybe not everybody loves to use the straps, but here are the benefits of them. Maybe you have different options, right? Maybe you have straps versus harnesses. Um, so just showing people how to use them and making sure they understand the benefits. That's where you can really kind of hone in and make it specific uh, on how it applies to them. But what I would, um, because there's so many different ways that you could um, do job coaching and I mean, there's so many different industries in terms of, you know, what's going to work specifically for you and how many people we're actually talking about trying to deliver this message to, it just try to think about times where maybe you've seen some job coaching used effectively. Um, you know, for yourself, like when a training session, for example, that you thought was super effective or super engaging, um, think about a coaching session that you've gone through, um, you know, and, and something that stuck with you. What was it about that that really stuck with you? Um, that's kind of where what you want to try to recreate, right? Make it engaging, make it interesting, make people want to listen to what you have to say and, and make them understand the, the value in listening to what you have to say as well. So there's lots of opportunities um, for, um, for job coaching. You know, it can be when a specific situation arises, it can be part of the orientation, it could be of doing your work through, but you know, there's lots of, there's lots of benefits, right? It's, it, in a return to work situation, it's going to help you to identify the barriers right away. Help them, you know, you do that one-on-one, -on -one, the person is more likely to be able to see or talk about some of the challenges or uneasy feelings they might have in returning to, back to work. Like that, that's really going to help to make that return to work successful, um, is spending that bit of extra time with them. It allows you to make changes to tasks or equipment if you're realizing that there is a gap. It uh, can reduce that risk of re-injury, right? It can really help to improve the worker's confidence coming back and really show that the employer is invested in them coming back to work and it being successful. Um, not to mention that it's going to help just in general with the overall culture, right? So, you know, showing that the employer cares. So when you're hiring a big group of new your seasonal, your students, um, it just kind of helps to add to that safety culture, um, educates them on their safe work practices so that they know to like what to do. There's a lot of students that come in who maybe this, what they're doing for the summer isn't what they do for the other eight months of the year, nine months of the year. Um, and so we need to get them up to speed on how ergonomics applies to that specific industry or that task that they're going to be doing for the summer. So there's lots and lots of benefits of job coaching, just kind of making it a bit more specific. Um, I think training is good, but I think job coaching, when you're kind of taking it to the next level, um, is even better. So I wanted to go through just a couple of examples um, of where just different types of training sessions or different types of job coaching um, initiatives that we've been involved in that I thought in particular were quite successful. And that way, then you've got some ideas on how it might apply to your work environment. Um, so in terms of like group training sessions, uh, absolutely you can do more of like an ergonomics 101 and that's kind of like the the broad term that we would give, um, you know, we're talking about the what is ergonomics, what are MSDs, um, and then we would customize a little bit, you know, in terms of how does it apply to me. So 
this often kind of takes the form of some slides, um, but trying to make it, always trying to make it as interactive as possible. Nobody wants to be PowerPointed to death all the time, um, especially in an orientation. There's just so much information that you get, get thrown at you. But, you know, using pictures, using videos, using practical examples, uh, making it very specific to them. You can use pictures and videos. Again, you can ask questions and, you know, you can act it out. So, like, for example, when we do training with custodial work, um, we make it very hands-on. So we get out the actual equipment, you know, get out a mop and show people, okay, well, yeah, the figure eight motion is the best way or it's the best practice, right? It gets the whole body moving. It helps you to to use pretty neutral shoulder and wrist postures. Um, and that's all fine and dandy, but you know what? Let's practice it. Let's go through and do it and provide that feedback. And that that's kind of that coaching um, in a group setting where you're actually kind of acting out the task um, and so that you're actually practicing it because it's pretty common to say, yep, yep, okay, yep, that makes sense. Oh, I do the figure eight motion. But guess what? When you get people to actually demonstrate what they do, it, it doesn't always line up. Um, what they think they're doing versus what they're actually doing isn't always um, isn't always a match. So, you know, you can do that in workshop form too. Um, you can have that ergonomics, but overall, you know, MSD awareness, you could do workshops. Um, we've seen this happen in wellness day sessions or you know, where um, like a wellness day session you could do, you know, make it a little bit more, sh a shorter session. Again, maybe make, have a bunch of different stations where people are rotating through. You could do it on vehicle ergonomics. You could do it on your custodial. You could do it on lifting techniques. You could do it on stretching and um, just different things, a way to, ways to get people thinking about their posture or ways to um, learn new tools from that ergonomic perspective. Um, if it's if it's an office environment, for example, that you have staff working on, offering some tips and tricks, very specific. Like, sure, office ergonomics is often done with, uh, you know, PowerPoint or self-learning, uh, a module, um, or you know, read a tip sheet. But offering some very specific tips. So if your workstations all have dual monitors, um, you know, offer a lunch and learn or one of your like a wellness day kind of station session or something on how to set up two monitors, right? Make it very specific so that it's applicable. Um, offer some tips on the benefits of left-handed mousing. Uh, if, you, uh, that's, uh, if you want me to sell you on that, um, I absolutely can. There's a little diagram there, the A and the B, to kind of show you how your shoulder posture is improved by mousing on the left side. <laughs> that can be a topic for another discussion if you want to talk about that more. Uh, we have half an hour today, but that just, you know, ways that you can make group training um, that you can make it add more of like a coaching element to it. In a return to work setting, um, again, I really like this in a one to one setting where you are talking about their anticipated challenges, their anticipated barriers, identifying those, um, trying to make it specific to, you know, what the job requires and what they're able to do and this can be I mean this is where you don't have to be an expert in the job and how to do it but you know listen to what um, listen to what they're concerned about knowing what their injury is right shoulder or back um, and then trying to problem solve with them and possibly some other key people but you know this really does work well in a one-to-one -one setting um, to make sure that you have the maximum success Job coaching doesn't have to be just for return to work, though, um, and you can do it one-on-one. -on -one, um, or again, in some cases, this can be small group settings, but job coaching like how to access shelving, right? So how to use a cart to um, slide things from a shelf onto the cart as opposed to lifting. Um, how to set up the vehicle, whether it be a pickup truck or a loader or um, a dump truck. What, make sure that people know how to do the do all the seating adjustments um, make sure that people are comfortable in using the equipment that's available to them again uh, this can happen in all different industries i mean you could do uh, in a healthcare setting we can talk about um, in a lab environment or a workbench setting anytime where you're trying to make educate them on bringing the items closer to them you know what happens when you're outside of your maximum reach zone right well now we're using more awkward postures because we're having to reach where anytime, you know, you do, I don't have a 
you see my next picture here, my next picture. So like, for example, in that lab environment, if you outstretch your arm in front of you, um, anything beyond that arm stretch is now going to require bending of the back, right? So just talking about proper setup, best practices, this can happen in a one-on-one -on -one setting or a small group setting. Um, definitely happens better when it's, when it's small. Right, like for example, we do we've done um, this one-on-one -on -one job coaching in a vehicle, and once you get more than about three or four people, it's it's really not effective because uh, not that many people can get in the vehicle to kind of hear and understand or look or be involved. Right, the engagement goes way down. So job coaching definitely works um, in a more a smaller setting, um, and then on the fly coaching, I see this working. Um, giving you an opportunity to provide feedback so this is kind of like you're ongoing um, so you've done your initial training you've done some initial coaching teaching people about ergonomics and getting them to look at their tasks from an ergonomic perspective and then for yourself i know i mean you're all coming from different roles and whichever but we've got uh, an opportunity here to provide feedback uh, it could be when you're there doing an assessment for something unrelated if you're doing a walkthrough or an audit on you know something else um, maybe you do morning rounds and that's just your opportunity um, maybe it's during like a safety talk you have a safety talk in the morning or your your shop talk um, your crew meeting those are all excellent opportunities to just talk about the coaching kind of on the fly so it's a little more informal the main thing is trying to make it effective and and really like if it's part of your overall program that's obviously um, going to be the most sustainable and the most consistent so that you know everybody's kind of doing it uh, in terms of when I feel like uh, you know when I feel like I see the most success after delivering a training session or in doing coaching is that um, being able to explain the why so that making that connection remember earlier I said you know what is ergonomics and that big question of how does ergonomics apply to me I really 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 want to make that connection and when I make that connection um, I feel like that's the win so um, I might start out in a training session I will almost always ask you know what is ergonomics what do you think of when you hear the word ergonomics and most people like I'm generalizing but most people will say well isn't ergonomics about getting the right chair when you're sitting at the computer Yes, it is, but it's more than that. Or they might say, well, isn't ergonomics about um, using good lifting techniques? Yes, yes, it is. It can be about that too, but there's so much more to that. And I feel that at the end of a session, if I get kind of that aha moment where somebody is saying like, oh, like I'm going to think about, um, you know, I really like that tip on how to adjust your mirrors for your vehicle. Or, oh, I'm going to be thinking about my posture now. I never really thought about, um, you know how I like how my posture is really like how bad my posture is when I'm loading and unloading the equipment from the back of the truck like these are some feedback that I, this is feedback that I've gotten recently uh, and for me like that is like a big aha uh, that's a win that's successful is when I am getting them to think about ergonomics how it's applying to their everyday tasks in a way that they weren't thinking about before before they were just thinking about it as lifting or before they were just thinking about it as a computer workstation um, for if you guys are tuning in and you are the one that's going you know that's kind of responsible for this uh, if that's going to be your role um, in doing some ergonomic coaching or ergonomic training what I would stress to you kind of as a, a big tip um, is that you don't need to be an expert in the job uh, so I don't have to be an expert at dump truck driver which I'm not <laughs> by any means um, I don't have to be an expert at uh, doing grass cutting or operating any of that grass maintenance equipment which I'm not uh, but I know ergonomic principles and I know how to apply them and so that that's my big kind of takeaway tip is trying to make that connection of what is ergonomics and how does it apply to the task you don't need to be an expert but you do need to help people make that connection to really get that engagement and uh, and make it successful right so if somebody's coming back to work you've got a bunch of new summer staff you've got seasonal staff um, making sure that they are looking at their tasks from an ergonomic perspective and you've got to win you'll have effective training you'll have effective job coaching and hopefully you're achieving your ultimate goal of reducing strains and sprains um, and applying ergonomics in the workplace So hot topic webinars. Wow, they go fast, hey? Half an hour? <laughs> oh 
<laughs> we're at 29 minutes already. It's 1029, which is perfect because I, you know, I got through it all. But if you have uh, any questions, now is the time to ask them. Um, again, knowing that today is more of a shorter topic, um, you are welcome to send questions to me or to us, my team, at any time. Info at proergonomics.ca. You can find us on the website, proergonomics.ca. You can always send us an email. Um, we will uh, send a follow-up email because I record every webinar and so we will send that recording out so that you can listen at um, your convenience or pass to your colleagues um, but uh, feel free to send any questions um, and I will always respond to you just uh, kind of as a signing off here um, we are hosting our internet uh, industrial ergonomics conference June 12th that is soon it's like two weeks away um, and it is, uh, we are giving away a free registration. This is our last month to earn a free registration. So we are gonna send out an email after the webinar today. Um, and all you, do, all you need to do is reply to that email to say, yes, I'd like to be entered in the draw. So if you want to come, um, I mean, and why wouldn't you? <laughs> come on, it's gonna be an awesome conference. You get professional development points. Um, there are going to be four sessions presented uh, by our team of professional ergonomists. So there'll be two sessions in the morning, you choose one. There'll be two sessions in the afternoon, you choose one. Tons of networking opportunities. We've got lots of people coming. Um, we provide opportunity for networking so that we can all chit chat about what we're doing with ergonomics initiatives. Um, and the focus is on industrial. So um, we're trying to make it a bit more specific. We're talking about industrial ergonomics. So uh, watch out for that. You know, if you don't win, don't worry. It's not cost prohibitive. It's $119 for the whole day. So watch for that email um, and stay tuned next month. We've got another hot topic coming up at the end of June. Um, and our hot topic will be about stretching programs. Thank you everybody for tuning in today. I hope that you have a great day. The weather looks beautiful out there. So I hope that you get to take that in and enjoy it. Um, and make sure to send any questions to me. Thanks.